In this video, we will be going through the service insertion process in ACI of a two-node service graph. The two-node service graph would consist of an ASA firewall and a FI ADC. We will start by creating a logical device cluster for the big IP. At this stage, you would enter the name of the logical device cluster, the version of the FI device package to be used, and the model which would be unknown manual, which will allow you to configure the options below. In this case, we would specify the mode as standalone. We would specify the type as virtual edition and the context that we would specify is single. Next, we would specify the physical domain, which in our case would be vCenter, the VMM integration, and the management would be out of band. The credentials would be the big IP admin username and password. We would then specify the management IP of the big IP as well as the management port, which is HTTPS. We would then specify the VM, big IP VM to be used for the integration. Next, we would specify the physical connection of the big IP to the leaf. In this case, the name would be the actual physical interface of the big IP which would be one underscore one, the virtual NIC to be used, network adapter to, and to what it physically connects to on the leaf, which would be port 10. The direction would be a provider. We would do the similar steps for the next interface, which is one underscore two, specifying the virtual NIC as network adapter three, connects to the same port since it's VMM integration, and the direction would be a consumer. The management IP address would be the same since it is a standalone. On the next screen, we could specify other big IP related parameters. In this case, we would specify the host name of the big IP that we would like to use. This would conclude adding parameters to the big IP and creating a logical device cluster. If we view the logical device cluster, initially it is in init state, initialization state, where the APIC and the big IP are trying to communicate successfully. Once the communication is success, the device state would become stable. Now we would move on to creating a logical device cluster for the ASA firewall. We would specify the name of the logical device cluster, the version of the device package, the model, which would be ASA virtual, the mode, which would be standalone, and the function type, which would be go through transparent. The connectivity of the physical domain would be of that of the vCenter and the credentials to be used are the admin username and password to connect to the ASA. We would then specify the management IP address of the ASA as well as the management port which would be HTTPS. We would specify the VM to be used and then we would define the physical connectivity of the ASA to the leaf. We would start with the management port, which connects to the virtual adapter network zero, and the direction would be that of management. Then we would move on to the next interface, gigabit ethernet zero, which would connect to the virtual adapter two on the same port of the leaf since it's VMM integration, the direction would be that of provider. We would continue with the same steps for the next interface, and that would be the direction of a consumer. The cluster management IP remains the same since it is in standalone mode. The next screen would allow you to add other ASA parameters if needed. Once we finish, this would conclude adding the logical device cluster for ASA. As we can see, once added, the device state is stable. Next, we would create an intermediary bridge domain for the internal interface of the firewall and the external interface of the load balancer. Click on creating a bridge domain. You would specify the name of the bridge domain to be used as well as the network to which it belongs.
Once you click Finish, go back to the bridge domain and change the following parameters. The L2 unicast to flood, unicast routing disabled, and ARP flooding enabled. Click on Submit. In the next section, we would see the subnets that are used for this particular example. We have a client bridge domain, an external bridge domain, an intermediary bridge domain, which we just added, and an internal bridge domain. The EPGs that are used for this particular example is a client EPG using the client bridge domain, the external EPG using the external bridge domain, and the internal EPG using the internal bridge domain. Next, we are going to create a graph template where we would specify the name of the template. The nodes that we want to know use is two nodes. The type would be two nodes, firewall and transparent and ADC in two arm mode. The node one would be our ASA firewall and we choose the profile that we want to use. The node two would be our big IP, F5, and the profile that we want to use. In this case, we are using a function profile. So if we go ahead and see the template that we created, we see two function nodes created, one for ADC and one for firewall. If we want dynamic attach endpoint, we go to the internal interface and enable the attach notification on the ADC. A function profile is you can consider as a template which has all the predefined big IP parameters that you would like to use in your graph. So in our case, the function profile we used has all the information like the monitor information, the pool information, the pool type in our case is dynamic, where we want dynamic attach endpoint. We specify the listener, which is the virtual IP. We also specify the network and the network relation. And we also specify the port on which we want our pool members to be listening on. In our case, port 80. Next, we are going to apply the graph template that we just created. In this, we specify the consumer EPG, the provider EPG, as well as the contract name. In our case, the consumer EPG is that of the client EPG. The provider EPG is the internal EPG. The service graph template is the one we created, and we choose a new contract. Once we click Next, we choose the device, logical device cluster that we created for ASA, as well as the bridge domain for ASA, which is the intermediate BD that we created. Here is where we specify all the parameters that are related to ASA that we want to be configured through the APIC. So what we're going to create is an access list that is going to permit all traffic through the ASA. So in this case, the destination address that we want to allow is any, any. And the source address that we want to allow is any, any. specify the action as permit and we want to specify the order of thousand. We also want to specify on the external interface the IP address that is going to correlate to the ASA. Another parameter we would want to change 
By default, we have an access list of HTTP and HTTPS with the order of both of them specified as 10. We would want to change one of them to say 20. Once we click next, we then go to the parameters for our F5 where we specify the logical device cluster of the F5 we created. As you can see, we already have pre-configured parameters on this graph because we use the function profile as mentioned earlier. There are a few parameters like port lockdown which are missing and we go ahead and update those. So we have all the parameters taken from the function profile. Once we click on finished, we have applied the graph template. And as we can see, we have two function nodes, one for ADC and one for firewall. Next step is to manually assign the bridge domain to the interfaces. So we go to the device selection policy and for ADC external, we assign it the intermediate bridge domain. For interface internal, we assign the bridge domain internal. For the firewall, the external interface, we define it as the client BD. And for the internal interface, we assign it the bridge domain, intermediate bridge domain. Then when we click on the deployed graph instances, we see that the graph is in applied state, which indicates there are no faults from the APIC side. The deployed devices, we see the ASA as well as the F5. Next, we'll see the configuration pushed by APIC to the ASA. If we do a show run, we see interface GE 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 1 in no shut and configured according to what was configured on the APIC. As we go further down through the configuration, we also see the access list that was configured by us to permit any, any. As we scroll down the config, this is all the other ASA config that is present. The APIC also pushes configuration to the big IP, creates a partition on the big IP where we had a node that is present, we have a pool that is present, and we have a virtual server. We can see all three using the network map tab. We also see the monitor has been added on the big IP. And from the network side, we see the self IPs and we also see the VLANs. And these are the same VLANs assigned by APIC 477 and 476. We are now going to walk through the pod group configuration on the vCenter. We will start with the ASA. The ASA network adapter to is assigned the intermediate bridge domain internal interface, which is connected to the ADC, and the network adapter three is assigned to the client bridge domain, which is the external interface. The big IP network adapter three is the intermediate bridge domain, the external interface connected to the firewall, and network adapter two is the internal BD, internal interface, which is connected to our backend servers. We will also walk through the client and the server configuration, which is going to be used to pass traffic. On the client, the network adapter is assigned to the client bridge domain. And we have one server that is assigned to the internal bridge domain. Since the server is assigned, we see only one node configured on our big IP as of right now. In order to demonstrate dynamic endpoint attach, we are going to assign the internal bridge domain to our second server.
Once the pod group is assigned, we ping the default gateway to make the server active. And we should see a attach notification to the APIC in the APIC logs. Once the APIC receives this attach notification, our device package is going to add that member into the big IP configuration. So we see on our big IP, we have two nodes in our node list. In order to test whether the traffic is passing through the ASA as well as the ADC, we are going to configure a capture on the ASA. We are going to send traffic from our client to our virtual IP. And as we can see, it hits the ASA as well as it is load balanced by the F5. As you can see, this response is received from server one as well as from server two. If we log into the big IP, we can go to the virtual server. We can go to the virtual server statistics and see that the traffic is being hit. Thank you. This is the end of the presentation.